This video is sponsored by no one. The thoughts and opinions are my own. However, unlike the previous six mini PCs I've reviewed, I did not purchase this one. Instead, it was provided for a product review on a particular sales platform. The review is honest, and favorability is not tied to the product, unlike some emails I've received recently asking for reviews. Special thanks to the new subscribers. You have pushed the count now to over 2,000. The subject of today's video is different in many ways to the previously reviewed Celeron and Atom powered machines. This is the Trig Key S5, powered by an AMD Ryzen 5 5560U. The S5 comes configured with 16GB of DDR4 RAM and a 500GB NVMe drive along with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth. I picked this up during time as an Amazon Vine voice, and as of the recording, it is the only computer I've picked up from that program. I was really curious about this because Passmark scored it really near what my desktop CPU runs, the Intel Core i7-10700. I wondered if it really was that good, and would it be worth the $459 it retailed for at the time. Here is my first Nook-like PC that started my look into the miniature computer world. Provided with the S5 is a user's guide and instructions for installing a SATA SSD. In the accessories box is an additional SATA ribbon cable, a VESA mount, one long and one short HDMI cable, power adapter, and screws. The design of this looks a lot like some of the B-Link machines and with good reason. They are both made by AZW. On the front, from left to right, we have a CMOS clear button, two USB 3.0 ports, a USB-C port, combination headphones and mic jack, and a power button. The sides are rather unassuming with a metal grill allowing for airflow. Along the back is our gigabit ethernet port, two USB 2 ports, dual HDMI, and a 19 volt DC power port. There is a warning to always power this device through the DC port and not try using the USB-C port on the front. You can add storage by removing the four screws on the bottom. On mine, there is already a cable installed, so I had to be a little careful removing it. This allows us to see that it is shipped with a Kingston NV1 NVMe M.2 drive and comes with 16GB of crucial 3200MTS RAM in dual channel configuration. It is like they know Ryzen's don't like single channel or something. Under the M.2 is a removable Wi-Fi card. This is the MediaTek MT7921K. Windows 11 Pro starts up just fine. CPU-Z confirms dual channel RAM setup and benchmark scores at 558.1 single core and 3790 multi-core. Cinebench R23 scores are 1300 single core and 7994 multi core. Not too shabby. Inside Linux, Sysbench scores are a whopping 4428 single thread and 29076 with 12 threads. I've used Sysbench a lot with Intel CPUs, but very little with AMD, and I am skeptical of the benchmark now on differing platforms but more on that in just a bit. Geekbench 5, also under Linux, came in at 1,436 single core and 6,320 multi core. Here is how it stacks up with the other six mini PCs I've reviewed. There really was no issues with YouTube playback. No drop frames at 4K with a 30 FPS video. My 4K 60fps video did produce some drop frames, but that could also be my network connection in Alaska, as the CPU and GPU really did not look like they were working that hard at all decoding VP9. Because of the questionable origin and security risk of this machine, I didn't initially hook it up to the network until I had a firewall and could put it behind and sniff the packets. I decided to reinstall Windows 11, and that's where I first ran into issues getting a few things to work. I emailed TrigKey support, as at the time this machine wasn't listed on their website. I got a fairly prompt reply stating they were on holiday break and would not get back with me right away. When they never did, I started searching around for driver support. 
not working were Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as something with multimedia. While Windows Update failed to bring anything in on its own, I did go out to Windows Driver Catalog and find one item, while the rest were taken care of by downloading and installing something from AMD. Opening it back up, once the RAM and storage are removed, there really isn't much to see on this side of the board. In an attempt to not rip the Wi-Fi antennas again, I do disconnect the Wi-Fi board from the main board. Getting it out is a little tricky, but I managed to do it without breaking anything. The CPU cooler fan is held on with two screws, and under that are some copper heat pipes to help carry the CPU heat away. The thermal compound is hard, so I clean it up and put some new paste on before putting it back together. Here are some pictures of various components on the board. I did manage to get it back together okay, and decided to see if the system is limited to 16GB of RAM. Turns out it isn't. I put in a 16GB SODIM with one of the 8GB ones, and sure enough Windows reports 24GB of RAM. I didn't leave it that way, because the larger stick I have is only rated at 2400 mega transfers per second while the RAM that came with it is rated at 3200. The BIOS is not locked down at all, and allows for lots of changes. It is a good thing there is a CMOS clear button on the front, just because you could easily mess something up here. Power draw from this machine is really good too, idling down in Windows 11 from 3 to 5 watts, to around 40 watts or just a little bit more when doing a CPU stress test. A 10 minute run with CPU Z and the Ryzen got up to 73C with an ambient temperature of 17. What I really want to know is can this be a desktop replacement? If you don't need dedicated graphics or space to put a 3.5 inch drive or an optical drive, I don't see why not. Can it replace my desktop though is the question. I have a Dell XPS 8940 with an Intel Core i7-10700 and 32GB of RAM currently. If we are just talking benchmarks, well, here is how the two machines compare. Now if you take a look at everything but the Sysbench, the i7 pulls ahead of the Ryzen 5. The Sysbench numbers just don't make sense though, so we'll just discount those right now. It seems that CPU-Z and Cinebench are good CPU benchmarks, while Geekbench does multiple benchmarks before assigning a composite score. Here is how the Ryzen 5 5560U compares to a similar chip I tested, the Intel Core i5-10400, which I hope to be building a system with next year. Both are 6 cores with 12 threads, and are a closer match. I've also tested it with some video editing. Considering I work mostly with 1080-30fps, it works well enough. The render times are a little slower, but not so much that it will deter my workflow as long as it doesn't give out. All these questions are important because, as I move, this will be my primary system for a few months. It is a lot easier to fly with the S5 in my luggage versus the XPS machine. I know it is possible, I'm already having to hand carry enough as it is. So is this a viable desktop replacement? Yes! Price seems a little high, but if you can find it on sale, and I have seen it this November for $100 off or so at times. With dual screen support, I can comfortably sit and do the work I normally do and watch streaming videos with no problem. True, you lose expansion and some custom ability, and no dedicated GPU means gameplay would be hampered, but for those who don't game this is a great machine that shouldn't slow them down, especially considering the decent memory and fast NVMe storage. If the experience doesn't work out for me, I'll be sure to let you know. This was the first Nook Mini PC I got, and it started me down the path of buying several to use as small Linux machines. As such, I wanted this to be the last in the series, but as things have gone, I have at least three different machines here already or on their way. I'll be sure to let you know my thoughts on them once I've been able to test them out. Unfortunately, 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 now my move must take precedent, but I am already looking at how to have computers waiting on me once I arrive at my new location. That wraps up my 6th review video in this series. If you like it, please leave a thumbs up. 
subscribe so you don't miss any of my reviews, and later employment of all these machines. Thanks again for watching. I hope that it wasn't terrible.